A few Sundays ago, my friend Jeremy and I gathered a couple of others. It's also good in here. And we made over a hundred tamales. Did I say that? He used to do this alone, <laughs> and soon realized that just wasn't right. Once I hit like tamal fifty that I'm rolling, I'm like, oh, this is hurting my back. <laughs> I'm like I'm pretty tired, yeah. and I've I've recently like have done this with you, and coming out of that where I was like, oh, we're done rolling already. Oh yeah, this is, we're having fun. Yeah, this is amazing. This is quick. Yeah, a giant. And it didn't take that long. No. Really, a giant task became really small. Yeah. Aww. Jeremy was born and raised in the Bronx and arrived in Minnesota in 2015. Now he's married and this is his home. Well, kinda. He was too homesick to really call Minnesota home. So he called his mom and he started asking her about her cooking. And he started to feel better. It's all about connecting as a first-generation Mexican-American, not only for me, but for her and to have those moments of like when I was first learning how to make tamales and FaceTiming her from Minnesota and just being like, hey, how does this look? This is my masa. And with not very good connection or video quality, she can look at it and be like, you forgot the lard, didn't you? And I just like, yes, I did. Most every Mexican-American family has their own version. And most will insist theirs is the best. Families also have their own important rituals around making tamales. But most people can agree, the important part is community. 